So where will the self-driving uh, vehicles really drive us and all the other new technology that is going on? It's a lot of new technology that will change the way we live, uh, the way we move in the future. Self-driving vehicles and automation is, is one part of it, but it's also connectivity, digitalization, industry 4.0, a uh, lot of things going on. But really, uh, the technology is one part. But what will happen? We people have created this. The private car, the private car usage uh, invented in the mid-1900s. Um, the car that, as we know it today, is really like a Swiss army knife. It's very convenient. You can use it in, uh, anytime. Um, but it's not really perfect for anything. Uh, will this be the future? This congested uh, mess? No, I don't think so. And this is what drives us at ITRL. It's not only about carbon dioxide and climate change, but it's also about creating uh, a city and a society where we want to live. We are at KTH, a technology uh, university, and technology is one part of it. But unfortunately, technology will not solve the problem itself. We need to take an integrated perspective to solve the mobility challenges in the future. So we need to have technology, of course, connectivity and automation, uh, efficient energy, efficient transport systems. But we also need to add the aspects of user and society, policy and business models, so how to design the services and the infrastructure, both the physical infrastructure, but also the digital infrastructure. And we need to get this working together. That's how we create the transportation system. Uh, so our question here is uh, the technology, the new technology, if we put it into the context uh, with all those other perspectives. Can we create a, su a sustainable transportation for the future? Those are the questions that we work with at ITRL, Integrated Transport Research Lab, that is a research center here at KTH, funded by Scania, Ericsson and KTH. So how can, how will the technology, the, all the cool technology and, and interesting and, and very good technology that we develop. How will that fit into the society and, and what will happen with the society in the future? And today, we will bring you to the future. Think 2030. Or really, we will actually be bring you into two different futures. Because one thing that we know about the future is that we don't know how it will look like. So we will bring you into two different futures. Uh, and Peter, you will help me. How is it in the future? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, sitting here in the city environment. It's very different in this future. Um, I'm now 15 years ahead of you, Anna. So it's very different in a way. <coughs> so it looks different. I ha I'm in this city. It looks like, okay, it seems to be Stockholm. In fact, I'm in here uh, walking around in the city. I realize that the city environment is slightly different. I can't really say why. Uh, the streets seem to be the same type of streets. Um, lots of people walking around. And then I realize there is no traffic noise. No noise in the city. There is no problems with big vehicles running around making all that noise. And after, after a couple of minutes of walking down the street, I realize the air is a lot cleaner. I thought the air was clean back in the 2015, but now it's really clean. It's like being in the archipelago or somewhere in, in the nature. Very interesting. Um, another thing, I walking down the street, I realize there isn't so much cars, especially not at all parked. I don't see parked cars here. Um, bikes, yes, quite a lot of small, strange looking vehicles, uh, like a small bubble, one person sitting inside or two, traveling quite slow. Everything seems to be slow in this future. It's not at all the same pulse that I remember from 2015. Um, everything seems a bit more planned. 
all the vehicles running around, they have a purpose. It's not empty. There is always a person coming in and out or some, some freight or, or goods moving in and out of the car. They are mostly electric, these things that are running around on the street. Electric bikes, electric cars, a lot of stuff like that. Anyway, it's a slower pace. It's obvious in this future. I'm sitting down in a cafe and I'm listening to the neighbors because I think that's a great way to look into the future. And then I see, huh, these guys are talking about batteries and solar cells. That's what they actually discuss now at the coffee table right next to the street. But they also discuss why the ticket prices on this uh, high-speed train called Hyperloop that goes to Gothenburg and you can also go to London, why they become so expensive. They also discussed that. So I asked these guys, uh, hey guys, why, why is it that the prices go up so much on the tickets? And then they say, oh well, you know, back in 2015, you may back in those days there was fossil fuels and there was like airplanes and all these buses that you can travel, several modes. But now we have gone, all the fossil fuels are gone. We don't use them anymore because they're too expensive. And this means that all these electric trains and everything also increased in price. Which is sad, but it means that we travel less. But we would like to go to London. And it's just an hour with the hyper Hyperloop train. Okay, interesting I think. Outside the bus stops, it's a slightly different bus. First I didn't even realize there was a bus. It's a quite small vehicle coming in. Maybe 10 people can fit into it. There is no driver. There is no backwards and forwards on this vehicle. It's identical on both sides. It stops automatically right outside the cafe and there is this little mobility hub. Um, and then uh, it's, it's people move out of the vehicle. After a minute or two, a green light is lit on the ceiling. It opens the doors again and some people move in and it, it travels away quite silently. And I realized it just was charging. It was charging outside the cafe at the stop. A couple of minutes later, to the same mobility hub, a small lorry-like vehicle arrives. It's a, it's a freight carrier. I haven't seen it from my days back in 2015. It delivers some boxes automatically, a robot arm delivers it, and it picks up some garbage boxes, and it moves away. Very organized, quite slow. All electric. All automatic. Finally, something I remember what it is, a big truck arrives. This one I know, it's a big truck. <laughs> it comes with a container in the back. And now all of a sudden, my ca ca cafe and neighbors, they start looking and, and pointing. And it's like, hey, look at that. Apparently, this is very unusual. It's also fossil driven because it's so big. But it's not using oil, apparently. It's using some biome-based fuel, of course. Anyways, you, make, you notice it because it makes noise, and it's big, but it delivers a huge container, which these small vehicles couldn't handle. Uh, the neighbors whisper something that this is usually done at night. And then I remember back in 2015, we were trying these things with night delivery. And apparently, 15 years later, that was the usual mode of big container delivery in the city. Anna. How could we, how, what has happened to this future? How could we end up here? It's slightly different, I would say. Yes, it's, it's very different. Or it is same, same, but it is still different. And what, what has happened? Um, so back in, uh, uh, yeah, back in uh, 2015 or 2017, we talked a lot about the, the sharing, shared economy, sharing data, sharing everything. But it's turned out that it was very difficult to get the cybersecurity right. So now in uh, 2030, we don't, uh, we are kind of keen to have our own space. We don't like to share our data because it is a threat related to cybersecurity. So we are not very keen on sharing our data and it's quite comfortable to live in a city that or, or live in, in our own space. We didn't like the thing of, of like sharing a living room or guest rooms or kitchens with others. We, we, we want our own space and, and that's nice. Um, but at the same time, we have seen serious climate threats and millions of people 
in the had to to move to uh, emigrate due to the climate changes back in 2020. So the governments in Sweden, in Europe, and and actually the whole world, uh, really turned their efforts in creating a sustainable society. In in Stockholm, or, or actually in whole Sweden, we now have. Uh, a, a Conge we call it congestion charges in 2017, but now you have to pay per minute you use the infrastructure in the city and uh, actually in the whole country. And it's not only depending on what time of the day you use it, but it's also depending on what size of the vehicle you have, how many persons you are in the vehicle, and uh, the, um, the fuel that drives the vehicle. So we have a, a, a system, a platform, that can handle all those things and really help us to choose the most sustainable way to transport ourselves. And this has led to an explosion in small electric vehicles. It's, it's quite often we have like three vehicles. Uh, every person has three or more vehicles at home because we can pick the small, choose a small one when we go alone. We can choose a bigger one when we go together. Uh, everything dependent on, on the charge. And the government taking control over the city and abandoned private car use or fossil fuel driven vehicles in the city has created this clean air. But it's not only, uh, it's not only taxes and fees that has created it, but it's also a common um, effort to create a charging infrastructure with inductive charging stations that we did research on at KTH in 2017. Inductive charging stations, so the buses can charge within only a few minutes. Uh, they have managed to create a system of electric roads, so the big trucks can, can charge while driving on the electric roads. And that was also something that we did research on at KTH, how such a system should work. Um, so, in this, uh, in this future, it is pretty much the same as today, but it, e it is easy to make the right choices. And this was one future, but maybe that's not the right future. Peter, now we move to another future. Okay, these are the futures over here. <coughs> Again, back traveling to 2030 or maybe a few years even ahead of that. I arrive in st it's Stockholm, clearly. Things look quite similar, like we always do. The city is quite static, as the built environment is. I tr walk along the street, and I realize, oh, here's the subway station. You come down in the subway station, and immediately there's a screen lit up saying, hey, Peter, I know you have a meeting. Why don't you take a car for you? I was like, what was that? And I walk a couple of more streets, uh, blocks down, uh, or, or walking down the subway station, and there's another screen lit up and say, hey, Peter, I know you're having a meeting. You should travel with us. We call ourselves Mobility Me. Sign up, and we will help you with all your mobility needs. And I realize these are just ads. It's commercial ads that they want to me to be part of some kind of new service. It's very interesting. So person comes up and stops and say, and I ask this person, wait, could you help me? I'm, I'm actually not from this time. I'm from previous years. Uh, so what is all this? And they say, well, you know, you remember back in 2015, 2017, Spotify. You remember that? Right? That was for music. Well, transportation has become Spotify these days. We all sign up for service. That's what we do. There are so many commercial players that offer these kind of services. It's perfect. So we don't have to own our own technology for traveling. We don't have to own cars, the stuff that you had back in those days. And by the way, what do you mean? I mean, owning car, who wants to do that? I've heard it was so dirty, you have to do all that stuff, changing tires, really costly. It's, it's very much like the 2000. Now it's 2030. We have the service instead. I, for example, subscribe to Mobility Me. It's the best. You should try it. And then this person leaves. Um, 
I don't have a subscription, so, but I managed to convince a woman that arrives and say, can I, can I book, a, you know, I would like to try this service, it looks fantastic. I really need to go to this meeting I have and, and I don't know how to get there. Subway is apparently one option, but this looks interesting. And she says, yeah, sure, I have this service, wouldn't cost me much, I can have you as my guest user. So I sign up in her account, open the like it's an app I was used to using, they don't use that anymore, but there is an app interface for us old persons. And there's all kinds of services. You can go by bike, car, and all these kind of options. But the most interesting is that there is a helper telling you that you should choose this route. It's the best for you. Don't have to think. Just click here. So I try that. Three minutes later, there is a car or some kind of car-like vehicle. It's more like a small bus in my terms. Stopping. Three persons already sitting in it. It stops all quietly up on the street corner. I just walk up and get inside. We don't know each other in the car, so it's very quiet and, and people are just sitting there. And it travels away along the street, silently. Not directly towards my goal, but it's taking a detour to drop off some other person. But it tells me, Peter, you'll be there in eight minutes. Don't worry. We're taking care of you. On the way, I'm looking out the window, and as we cross the outskirts of Stockholm City, I can recognize something. Hey, there is an old Porsche. I know that. It's a nice car, I remember from back in the days. And then I realized all these people in the, in the, other, in, in the bus, are, they're actually looking out, pointing. And there's this old man, real enthusiastic guy, with a Porsche cap and everything, he's looking into his car. And it seems to be quite unusual to have your own car at this time. Then I look at the Porsche again and it says, car for you. Ah, it's another part of the service. So it was not even that was not his own vehicle was part of a service. This future is very much commercial. Everywhere there is commercials for different services. Transportation, as I remember it back from my days, was very important for me, has become a lot of services. So, Anna, how could we end up in this strange, very commercial future? Yes, so in this future, uh, what you need is what you get and you get it even before you know that you need it. This, uh, in this future, it's, driven, it's really driven by the, the industry and the commercial side. We have seen the climate threats, but not so much. Um, and the government and, and the society, the, the urban planners, didn't really take the lead, but instead the industry did take the lead. At the same time, we have, we, we don't, even we, we not only like the sharing but we love it we we share everything we share dogs we share uh, sofas we share wives we share everything in this future and uh, there has been an explosion of new services new mobility services and we did we did do <laughs> research on that also at kth uh, back in 2017 how to, in the best way, uh, utilize a fleet of different size of vehicles uh, to, uh, to meet the travel demand. Uh, in, this, uh, in this future, the mobility is not, it's not only about mobility, but it's integrated in the, whole, uh, in the whole life, in the whole service. So the transportation to the restaurant is included in the price or uh, LinkedIn offers services to the companies that we take care of all the mobility for your, uh, your employees. We don't only make sure that they come to work when they should come to work and can stay home or go to an office hub when they don't go to work, but we also match your, uh, match your employees with other, uh, with other persons that may be good for them to meet during the trip. So kind of extra speed dating uh, add into this. So in this future, uh, what you need is what you get, and you get it before you even know that you need it. Um, those were two, uh, of, oops, two of the different futures uh, that we are exploring at ITRL, and we are investigating technology that may create different futures. But what future we want, it's up to us to decide. And the decisions that we make today creates a future of tomorrow. 
Thank you.